Algebra 1, number 3.2b, we're still talking about the multiplication properties of equality, and we're going to show you how to solve word problems with the multiplication property of equality. So after picking out clue words, and there's a link in this description about how to pick good clue words to help us write an equation from a word problem, we may need to use that multiplication property of equality. Just remember to assign a variable that makes sense, like B for bananas or C for cars, a capital B if you're going to do Bob, or a capital E for Emma, or a J for jelly beans, okay? And just remember that there's going to be video links in this description that can help you, all right? Even going back to the previous video. In 1910, the population of Los Angeles was about 320,000, which was one-twelfth the population it had in the year 2010. So what was the approximate population in 2010? Well, in 1910, it told us it was 320,000, and that's one-twelfth of what we need to find. So we're going to let P equal population in 2010, and because it was one-twelfth, we're going to do one-twelfth P. We're going to multiply the one-twelfth times the P to find our answer. The 1910 population can be written as a fraction, one-twelfth of P. We use the multiplication property of equality and we multiply both sides of the equation by 12. Now why did I pick 12? Because that's the one that's on the same side as the variable and we need to get this variable alone and isolate it. So we need to get rid of this 1 12th. So by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of 1 12th, so we can actually put a little 1 underneath here, couldn't we, to make it the reciprocal of 1 12th. We multiply both sides by 12 over 1, and we get 12 over 12p, don't we, on this side. And I'm using the approximate symbol because these are approximate populations, okay? So it's not an equal. We multiply the 320,000 by 12, do a little math on the side, and we get 3,840,000. So we know 12 over 12p is approximately 3,840,000. And... This can turn into our little friend, the invisible one, can't it? It's the multiplicative identity property, and the 12 over 12 is 1. 1 times p is just the p, and we've got our answer. p is approximately 3,840,000. Now, the actual population in 2010 was 3,796,000, but I wanted to use 1 12th as a fraction and not choose one between 1 11th and 1 12th, which would have gotten us to the actual one, you know, the ac a closer approximation. I figured 1 12th was easier for our example, okay? All right, this one might be a little bit easier. Bob bought a six-pack of soda for $3.30. So what was the price for each can? So we're going to let C equal can. That makes sense, doesn't it? And because this six is now on the same side as the variable, See, six cans equals $3.30. Doesn't that make sense as an equation? And we need to get rid of this six so that the C is by itself so we can solve this. And we chose one six to multiply on both sides with the multiplication property of equality because that is the reciprocal of six. See, the six over one, the reciprocal is one six. And multiplying both sides by that one six is going to help us get rid of this 6 on this side, so the C is isolated and it's by itself, and we can find out what it equals. And we get 6 over 6 when we multiply this side, and when we multiply 3.30 by 1 6, we get 3.30 over 6. All we have to do is mul uh, divide 3.30 by 6, and I do, and we get 0.55. So we know that 1 C because this turns into a 1, because the numerator and denominator are the same, right? 1c is equal to 0.55, so we don't need to write our friend the invisible 1, so just c equals 0.55. So it's 55 cents per can, okay? We can check our answer by substituting it into the equation. It's a really good idea in case you do some improper math, some, you make a mistake somewhere. If you, you, if you check it, you have more of a chance of getting an A on your paper, okay? So we just need to multiply 0.55 times the 6 to see if that'll get us back up to that 6-pack 
of $3.30, and it does. 0.55 times 6 is 3.30. See? So we did it right. All right? So in our next video in 3.3a, we're going to use this, the multiplication property of equality, and we're going to continue on by putting it together with the addition property of equality. Okay? And we covered that, the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality. So in the next video, we're going to use both of these together. Okay? I'll see you there. Bye.